This is the new Pinarello Dogma F. It looks incredible. And the headline stats are, it's lighter, it's stiffer, more aero, and it's disc brake only. Why, by how much, and how have they achieved all that? Well, I'm gonna explain that, as well as all of the other features, and I'm gonna weigh it, and if you're lucky, do a free up sound check. Let's go. Full disclaimer though, Pinarello are one of our sponsors here at GCN, which is great, but it means that this isn't a review. But don't worry, I am gonna tell you everything you need to know about the bike and explain all of the new features. And I'm very well placed to do that because I've been fortunate enough to ride every Dogma since the 65.1. One of the first things I think we need to address is the way it looks, and in particular, the color. So this paint is absolutely stunning. It's a special paint called Luxter Blue, and it's actually multi-layered. So it appears to have this sort of satin uh, blue finish, but because it's multi-layered, it changes depending on the angle of the light. And it's something that in real life, when you see it in person and the sun is out, it really is spectacular. I, I think it's hard to capture how nice it is on camera. There are other color options available, but I think this looks really smart, especially with the contrast of the, the silver Pinarello logos throughout the bike. Now, Pinarello is continuing its philosophy of one bike to rule them all. The ideology that they just make the best all round bike and don't have dedicated climbing bikes and dedicated aero bikes like other brands. But there are a lot of visual changes throughout the bike compared to the previous model. And the main goal of these has been to improve the aerodynamics. But how do you balance aerodynamics and weight? Well, Pinarello has employed the services of performance analysts, aerodynamicists, and data scientists and got them to analyze a load of real life data. Notably, Geraint Thomas's 2022 Tour de France. And the result of that was that they found that small improvements in drag and rolling resistance were far more significant than reducing the weight of the bike. And they're claiming that the new bike has a rather modest improvement in its drag of a reduction of the drag coefficient, the CDA, by just 0.2%. But they reckon that this equates to a 175 gram weight saving. Overall, the bike is still lighter than the previous one, 108 grams lighter, according to Pinarello, which I've worked out is worth about five seconds on a climb like the Mortarolo Pass in Italy, which might not sound like much to you, but if you're losing the Giro d'Italia by 14 seconds, you definitely take it, especially when you add it up over every single climb throughout the entire race. One of the ways in which they've been able to keep that weight down and also make the bike stiffer is the use of super high-end carbon fiber. Not all carbon is equal, and they've used Torre M40X, which is the top of the range product from the Japanese carbon fiber brand Toreka. Now, not all bikes are able to, to use this particular product. They're quite restrictive with who they supply it to. The main thing you need to know is that it's incredibly light and incredibly stiff. As, as mentioned, the, the, the visual changes throughout to, to all the tube shapes have been done to improve and tweak the aero performance of the bike. So combined together, all the sort of thinner tube shapes that you can see are said by Pinarello to increase the frontal aero penetration. I just wanna stress Pinarello's words, not mine. So how does one achieve improved penetration? Well, the down tube has a completely redevised shape. So it's so much thinner here on this back section, but it still has that characteristic widening halfway down to accommodate and integrate a round bottle better so that you don't get a big aero penalty from your bottle. 
The bottom bracket has been completely redesigned. So it's been rotated by three and a half degrees and it actually sort of bulges out here a bit more, something that they call an aero keel, as it also helps increase the aerodynamics or, or improve the aerodynamics of the bottom bracket area. Um, but it's just so much bigger as well. And it's just built up a lot higher, something which Pinarello says improves the stiffness. The head tube has got a narrower and sleeker too in a bid to make it more aerodynamic. So it's actually eight millimeters narrower than before, and it still has that characteristic bump on the front. This is a deliberate aero feature that was introduced as far back as the Pinarello F8 back in 2013, and has fairly recently uh, been copied by another leading brand. I don't need to tell you uh, who that brand is because you all already know. And the, the other thing is that I think when you see these bumps and curves on a bike like a Pinarello, a lot of people mistakenly think that these organic lines are just kind of there for show and there for aesthetics, but they're not. Every little sort of crease and curve on here is deliberate and is painstakingly being uh, achieved through aerodynamics and CFD testing. And that little bump on the head tube is a classic example. As for how they've achieved the narrower head tube, well, the cable routing has changed. So instead of being routed down the sides of the steerer, as it was when it was first introduced on the Pinarello F12, it now routes down the front of the steerer tube. And the steerer has a different shape as well. So inside here, instead of a standard round steerer, it's now elliptical. Uh, the head tube is also deeper as well. So if I turn it, you can see it actually extends a bit further back there to help make the bike a bit more aerodynamic. But overall, uh, this is also better just from a maintenance standpoint, having taken these bars off and had a play with it, it is just easier to, to take apart and put back together again than it was on the previous one. Um, while we're here, you can also see the massive tire clearance we've got. So that's been increased now uh, up to 32 millimeters, but I think you'd, you'd probably get more in there. These are 28s. Some people can often be very cynical about slight tweaks and improvements to one bike from the next and it's quite dismissive of these claims as just being marketing. But I know I'd always say that if you don't tell people about the improvements that you make, if you don't market the features that you've made, then no one will ever know about it. And we've independently tested the previous Pinarellos in the wind tunnel. So we, we had the 65.1 and we put it up against an F8 and an F. And at 35 kilometers an hour, the F was 15 watts faster than the, the 65.1 and six watts faster than the F8. Now that might not sound like much, but in a 40 kilometer time trial, that equates to two minutes 23 or one minute 13 respectively, which is absolutely loads. <laughs> and, you know, it's progress. And you'd expect that the new F is a slight improvement on that. For me, it's a bit like smartphones in that the difference between an iPhone 14 and an iPhone 15 isn't that big, but the difference between an 11 and an iPhone 15 is huge and I feel there's a similar thing here. If you compare this against a Pinarello F8 or an F10, the difference is night and day. Another feature I love is the way that they've hidden the through axles on the drive side. So on the front and the back, you can see that they're just really neatly hidden there. It's just a very smart detail. They say it also makes the, the bike a slightly more aerodynamic. I mean, in realistic terms, you're talking fractions of a watt there, but it's just a very visually pleasing aspect of the design. And other little things throughout, there's loads of just very nice little details. And something else that's, that's caught my eye here is the way that the rear derailleur cable, rather than coming through a little port and sticking out, it's just very neatly rooted through a notch in the rear derailleur hanger. It's just, oh, it's very, very neat and tidy. Regarding handling and geometry on the new bike, there have been 
lots of tweaks and improvements apparently and these have been done through that performance analysis that I mentioned earlier but also thanks to the input of pro riders including people like Tom Pidcock and I kind of think he's probably someone who's worth listening to when it comes to riding downhill. Now having looked at the geometry sheet the biggest difference that stands out to me is the fork rate. So on my previous Pinarello F it was 43 millimeters whereas now it's further out it's 47 millimeters which is said to just help the sort of downhill stability cornering and handling. The seat post clamp has been completely redesigned as well. So the wedge used to stick out at the top there. It's now fully integrated and hidden inside the frame. Something which Pinarello says saves a tiny bit of weight, but it also helps keep dirt out of the system as well. And it's just accessed via the two bolts at the back. A couple of things that are retained from, from the previous uh, bike though, are the 3D printed titanium saddle rail clamp very smart, helps keep the weight down, and the uh, Italian threaded bottom bracket. There is, however, another feature on the new bike, which I think has the potential to give an even bigger aerodynamic saving. And more on that in a bit. There is a big thing that we haven't spoken about yet, and it's a feature that I feel has the potential to make the bike considerably faster than the 0.2% reduction in CDA that Pinarello is claiming and that is the new cockpit because it's now available in more sizes than ever before so you can have stem lengths from 80 to 140 millimeters mine's a 120 and you can have bar widths from 34 centimeters center to center on the hoods through to 42 and this is a 34 nice and narrow and very aero and the bars also have a flared drop so they flare out seven degrees onto the drop to make them wider there and they have a special design which allows for turned in levers because it's more aerodynamic and because they're designed to allow for that turned in lever position should the UCI have jurisdiction where you ride, you'll be okay. They also do an ultra light handlebar with a slightly different shape. This one though is the more aero one. Of course it is, the Talon uh, Ultra Fast. Now those drag savings that Pinarello were, were stating are just the bike. But as you all know, the biggest contributor to aerodynamic drag is the rider. So I feel that they've been quite conservative with it because by offering a much wider range of sizes, you can, well, firstly get the rider much narrower, much more aerodynamic, but just by improving the ergonomics of the rider, you can potentially elicit much bigger savings and achieve greater performance. Most big brands don't tend to offer integrated cockpits in this wider range of sizes. I often find that the stems I want are not long enough and the bars don't go narrow enough. So it's great to see that huge range offered here. And as mentioned, the new F is only available in a disc brake model, but fear not rim brake fans, because the previous generation F, which was available in rim brakes, they're still gonna make the rim brake version of that for several years to come. So other details on my particular bike. Well, I've got my Seller Italia SLR Boost saddle on there. My favorite saddle in the whole world. It goes on every single bike uh, that I ride, which familiar viewers of the channel will see. Uh, cranks are 170, as that's what I tend to, to run most of the time now. Slightly shorter, just prefer it. Uh, pedals are Wahoo Speedplay uh, Nanos, so they've got the titanium axles keeps the weight down a little bit. Bottle cages, these are to peak carbon. These are just 20 grams each, so nice and light, but they also secure the bottle quite nicely. The cockpit, um, I've gone for the narrowest one that Pinarello now offer, Aero Gains. So this is 34 center to center, but as mentioned, it has um, a flare on, on the drops, so it's wider on the drops, and I've got a 120 stem. Uh, also on here, 
wax chain patrol, silica wax chain, obvs, of course it is. Uh, and on the front, we've got, um, I've changed the out front mount. So on here, nice little detail this for the, for the Wahoo. Um, this is a 3D printed titanium out front mount that has been made by friend of the channel, Tom Sturdy. Thanks, Tom. Uh, the wheels are from Princeton Works, and they're actually what, what stock have, have come with the bike. Um, although I will be swapping them out uh, for some new visions, which I've got coming on the way. Um, although in the meantime, let's do a free up sound check of these, because I've not free up sound checked them before. And they've got some rather nice uh, white industries hubs. well greased. So what about the weight? Well, I'm going to weigh it. Pinarello reckons that a size 53 in this spec is 6.77 kilos. So let's see what this one is. It's a 575, 57. Seven point two one. Nice. I reckon I can get the weight down a little bit as well. If I do an Andrew Feather, take the bar tape off, 150 grams. Uh, and then also these wheels aren't the lightest. I put some lighter wheels in, uh, set them up with really light inner tubes and some, well, some lighter, newer Pirelli tires. I reckon we get down to seven quite easily. But that's not all. See, if you're gonna get a top end bike like this, I'd say it's really important to get a bike fit first, especially when everything is so integrated on these bikes now. And one of the nice things about Pinarello is that they offer more frame sizes than most other brands. And I've actually changed my frame size. So on my previous F, I was a 56. And I've gone up to a 57, well, a 575. And that's because earlier I did a Seller Italia ID match bike fit on their jig. But if you want to find out how I did that, why, and why it's caused me to change my frame size. Well, we have a video that'll tell you all the answers to those questions. Right, I'm gonna go now. I love you, bye.